Dylan White wins the Battle of Brixton with a 10th round stoppage over Ian Lewison to capture the British heavyweight title. It was an engaging fight throughout. I felt like Ian Lewison won the first round and he did most of his best work in the first half of the fight as many people or most people expected given the fact that he was definitely not in good condition. In fact, he was in terrible condition. <laughs> I've never seen Ian Lewison look so poor physically as he was in this fight. Sorry, as he was in this fight. But still, he hung in there. He was competitive. He threw plenty of punches. He was trying to catch Dylan White with counters often. And you could see in there that, that Ian Lewison had the pedigree from the amateurs. You know, I'd spoke pre-fight about the fact that this guy was a top-level amateur, fought people like Odlinair Solis, David Price, Robert Hellenius, etc., etc., fought in many international fights as an amateur. You could see that he had that type of schooling, but because of his appalling physical condition, he wasn't able to make that count the way you would have liked to, you know, have seen him. So that was unfortunate, but... While he was in there, he gave a good account of himself for a guy who was so badly out of condition. Some people before the fight, especially people who weren't really familiar with Ian Lewison, were saying that this is actually a step down for Dylan White from Dave Allen. Well, I think we can all agree now that it certainly wasn't a step down. He ended up being pulled out by his corner at the end of the 10th, but he was certainly a lot more competitive than Dave Allen was. He threw a lot more punches than Dave Allen, he landed a lot more punches than Dave Allen and he showed a lot more boxing acumen in there than Dave Allen did. And again, that's because of the fact that Dave Allen only had about eight amateur fights or something like that at a very low level. Whereas Ian Lewison had, I think, over 60 amateur fights at a high level. So when you have that type of know-how, you can get in there with a Dylan White and get certain things done. But ultimately, Dylan White, I feel like he placed his punches well and he boxed very sensibly. He didn't get involved too often occasionally he did kind of scrap it out with Ian Lewis in a bit but he never really got caught with full power from Lewis and so White showed decent defense in there and White's conditioning you know I've spoken about Dylan, uh, Ian Lewis's conditioning White's conditioning is improving every fight some people said that he still looked fat this that and the other at the weigh-in I, I can see a definite improvement fight in fight out with Dylan White's conditioning his punches seem more correctly delivered now. He's uh, picking his shots very well. He was going to the body very well. There was the occasional wild swing here and there from Dylan White, but for the most part, he was boxing quite neatly. And I thought he did well. Uh, Ian Lewison is skilled up close. The way he tucks up and then throws those counters and, and whatnot in the body shots. And White's condition and allowed him to absorb those body shots without showing too many signs of deterioration in terms of his legs going or anything like that. And as I say, the defense on the inside from White was pretty good. He was just slipping the shots, rolling the shots, not catching anything too clean. And particularly early on, Ian Lewison was really loading up with the shots. And <laughs> had one of those landed, uh, Dylan White might have been seeing stars. And uh, I kind of... After this, after watching this fight, I kind of do wish it was in London because there really was some very, very fierce exchanges between the pair of them. But the crowd was just apathetic. You know, the the atmosphere would have been so much better if the fight was in London. And I think people would have appreciated the fight more. The crowd would have appreciated it more if it was in London. But having said that, I think the crowd weren't booing or anything until the end. The crowd did actually boo the stoppage. They were kind of interested to see how the fight would end. I think they wanted to see Dylan White maybe get a clean KO of Ian Lewison. And they felt like they, they were kind of deprived of that. Lewison showed a lot of heart. He was bitterly disappointed when his corner pulled him out in the end, but he did have a badly busted nose. His eye was bust. And it was only a matter of time, really. I mean, you never know. It's heavyweight boxing and Lewison was still swinging big, but White's attacks seemed measured. There was nothing too reckless there from Dylan White. And that's what I was concerned about for White before the fight, is if he got reckless or overconfident against Lewison, he could get clipped and get knocked out. But you could see that White respected Ian Lewison's power. And he wasn't trying to 
you know, get over ambitious in there because he understood that this guy can seriously bang. So, yeah, I felt it was a good performance from Dylan White, a good stoppage by the referee. Well, actually, not the referee, sorry. Good stoppage by Don Charles, Lewison's uh, trainer. And Lewison was disappointed, but he needs to be most disappointed in himself. Don't be disappointed at Don Charles. Be disappointed at himself because he's always had the ability, this guy. But you can't hope to have any success in boxing if you have absolutely no respect for your own health and fitness, which Ian Lewison clearly doesn't have. He's admitted many times he don't enjoy training. He, he likes fighting, but he hates training. He hates the running and the fitness side of things. He said he'd rather be at home playing his Xbox <laughs> in one interview. I think that was on Boxing Beats or Rhymes channel. If you've got that kind of attitude towards training, you're never going to get the best out of yourself in terms of maximizing your potential and talent. So sad story, but maybe, just maybe, this is a long shot. Maybe this could motivate Ian Lewison to get in better condition because he saw what he can do in there, even being well overweight. If he was actually in shape, the fight would have been a lot more interesting than that. So anyway, it was uh, a, a decent battle, but Dylan White, I think, was in control most of the way. And he moves onwards and upwards. I think he looked better technically as well than he did in the Dave Allen fight, not just in terms of fitness. So drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you feel about this fight or what you felt about it. Where do you see both fighters going from here? Did you get the fight that you expected? Personally, I did. I thought it might be a bit more heated than it was, uh, particularly from Dylan White's side. But I got the kind of fight that I expected. You know, I expected a lot of lever to be thrown and there was a lot of punches thrown by both men, a lot of big shots. But ultimately, Dylan White's fitness and uh, the fact that he's been active and that he's been having long training camps and what have you and getting the top quality sparring, that is what told at the end of the day. Ian Lewison was really kind of boxing off memory, boxing off, you know, 15 years ago when he was a top level amateur he was trying to bring back that type of form just from memory you know he hasn't been performing at that type of level anytime recently so anyway let me not waffle on too long here let me know how you felt about the fight and do you think ian lewison has a future if he can get himself into condition and who do you think would be a good next opponent for dylan white you know, I have to address this. A couple of people are now questioning Dylan White's punching power because he hasn't knocked out his last two opponents. His last two opponents being Ian Lewis and, and Dave Allen. Uh, neither one of those guys has ever been knocked out. I don't know how you can question a guy's punching power when he doesn't knock out two guys who have never been knocked out. <laughs> Explain that to me. Yeah. Uh, Mike Tyson, when he was on the way up, before he won the heavyweight title, he went 10 rounds back to back with James Tillis and Mitch Green. And James Tillis had been knocked out several times before he fought Tyson. Well, Tyson couldn't knock him out. And he fought Mitch Green. Mitch Green was a tough guy, like a, a Dave Valor or an Ian Lewis, and who's never been knocked out, never been dropped. And again, Tyson went the distance with Mitch Green. Couldn't knock him out, couldn't drop him. Yeah, just because you fail to knock out people who don't get knocked out, it don't mean you can't punch. <laughs> He's a heavyweight at the end of the day. Yeah, so uh, anyway, let me not go on too long. I'm going to leave it there. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out. Oh, 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 by the way, before I do go, Dylan White's next fight is going to be Derek Chisora, it seems, if Chisora is willing to take that fight. I have absolutely no doubt that Dylan White will beat Derek Chisora. No doubt at all. I'll put my flipping house on it. <laughs> There's no way that Derek Chisora is beating Dylan White. I'm telling you now, people, that fight right there, Ian Lewison had more, is going to have, you know, Ian Lewison had more success than Derek Chisora is going to have in terms of landing shots. I'm telling you, Chisora is going to be in better shape than Ian Lewison. No question about that. But Chisora don't have them type of moves that Lewison has. He don't have the punching power Lewison has. He don't really have the, 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 the class, to be honest, that Lewison has. But he does have a much better engine. He is in much better condition. And he does have 
high level experience as a professional, whereas Lewison doesn't. So I'll give Derek Chisora those things. But in terms of his actual boxing ability and his technique, he's nowhere near as good as Ian Lewison. And you'll see that when White fights Derek Chisora if that fight goes ahead in December. So anyway, it's your boy Hatman, I'm out.